really a good point. Hey, hey. Time is now 1.42. I call the session back to order after recess. On the agenda, uh, the next item is for the CEO to introduce the talent heads. Uh, the floor is now yours, Mr. Blue Kennedy Hunter. Hello. Thank you, Speaker. Members of the House, and visitors, candidates. Again, we approach you with reports from the executive branch. As you know, there are many issues that we face, you know, and it's, it's something that we're working on. You know, it's been over a year, and I can honestly say that we've made a lot of progress, given the condition that the, the executive branch was left as we took control, as the administration took control. There were many things we had to change and revise, all kinds of things. But at this point, you know, I think we're doing pretty well. You know, and the reason is we've got some good candidates. We've got the support of the executive branch uh, officials, and we're doing well. And you already have the uh, the detailed reports from the cabinet heads. So I've instructed the cabinet heads that uh, they go ahead and limit their, their reports to the highlights, the highlight for you, and then you'll see the detailed reports that they've given to you. Right now, as you've heard, and as you've seen, and as you've read, the biggest concern is finance. I'm not involved in finance a lot, a lot, but it does affect me because I too have taken the eight hour cut. Just about all of us have done this. You know, it's really something that we all had to do because, you know, we had no choice really. Otherwise, we go down the hole. And so we did that, and I think it's working well. Within, before too long, we'll be able to recover some revenues so that the term economic development can be a true factor in the growth of the Crow tribe. At this point, we, have, we don't have revenue streams. I recently visited the Winnebago Nation, and they have what they call the whole chunk incorporated. It's not a 501c3, it's a different form of structure. And with us and with them, it's just a matter of structure. It's not, it's not the codes, it's not the articles. I do know it's a matter of structure, support, and ongoing growth. And so, you know, with the 32-hour work week, it's something that we do, and we, we, we are working with it. But you know, the difficult part is many of our people do not understand that there are work ethics that we have to abide by. There are times like this when we have to take the cut so that we can do something as a whole for the tribe as a whole because after all, you know, we work for the Crow Nation. We're not here just to fill our pockets. You see, and that's the main thing is that so that we can eventually get to a form of diversification of revenues. We can bring in a lot of money like a lot of different tribes do in the past, in a former life. I traveled throughout the nation, worked with just about as many Indian tribes as they are, and I would look at the finances, I would look at the structure. You know, at this stage, we're almost, you know, we're almost at a uh, unfortunately, because we have not structured to the point where we can diversify, we can actually bring in an income, and we have the potential. The potential is there for us. We have the natural resources, we have the personnel. But again, it's a matter of structuring, it's a matter of needing support, working together with all three branches in the way it's established here. Many tribes don't use the structure that we have. Many tribes have the tribal, uh, the council form, the business management form of government, and they work well. But for us, this is what we have, and so, you know, we've worked towards, and we've strived towards using this structure 
to bring in income, to bring in jobs, and continuation of everything that we have. And you'll hear from the, from the directors too also because they've been instructed to be here so that you can have time to directly question some of our people. And you'll find that, you know, with the little resources we have, we, we've gone quite a ways. And again, I want to stress that, you know, you'll find that as we set up a form of internal structure within the economic division, or rather within the executive de uh, division, you'll find that economic development is key to each and every department. We work at it, but you know, there needs to be an outside form to that. And that's something that we want to work towards, and eventually, you know, you'll get that information and we'll work towards it. Diversification, that type of stuff. So, without going any further, let me just introduce to you uh, the reports which were given by the will be given by the cabinet heads, and then you'll have time to question some of the cabinet heads and the department heads. And I put uh, reports in, in alphabetic order. It's not a matter of importance. It's just alphabetic order to make it fair. And so we're going to begin with Kenneth Devity, personnel. I'd like to make a quick announcement. Uh, if you have cell phones, please turn them off or put them on vibrate. Thank you. Aho. Thank you. Speaker, legislators, members, friends, and fellow employees. Uh, changes are being positive. And today I'm just going to talk mostly about what drives our personnel as well as the tribal operations. Everywhere that you will go, in any place you will go, the place to be driven is vision, statements, and values, and that's what I'm going to cover today. The mission statement that I put together is this. We reveal and foster positive attitude, caring by improving the welfare of the Crow people. And communities we serve stay positive and work towards unity. We can overcome many obstacles. Accomplishment, finance, but we can overcome that. We want to put those to work. Dela, the vision that I wrote down is, and I put this as, as a crow and having grandparents that are old. Why is that? You want to talk about Inspired by our, our forefathers, we will be distinguished as the premier person centered human resources and trusted partners. We're here, partners. We're here for that purpose. We will share accountability with tribal members and other stakeholders to coordinate jobs across all settings and improve access and quality employment opportunities and training affordability. Again, we've already done that. I believe Mr. Louis Goodlett has already done that. AML, roads department, such. That's the direction in which we lead. I'll go get it. I know that there's people out there that are willing to find jobs, they're willing to go out and find other jobs. Hey, that, that's what I'm talking about when I am saying all across work settings. We will grow as the great Absaluke Nation based employment networks to serve more people in partnership with others who share our vision and values. I mean, you got to go back. Every organization that I've been to, it's been a habit. It's been a way of doing things, we read the mission statement first. We let someone read the mission statement and then our vision statement. This is what will drive the pro tribe. Not someone else out there, not someone here, but what we wrote down and what we need to follow, something to look at. If we go to any place, it's always written. If you go to Harden High School, if you look at it, they've got what we call expectations. There's only three. You'll see them on all the doors. That's what we need. That's what we need. That's what drives. That's what 
put us together. And that coming together is called discipline. The values and each of these are of equal importance. Excellence. It's by will. We need to set and surpass high standards. The level of expectation you have for each other is the level in whom you will perform. That means you've got high standards, it's going to be performed that. If you expect low <coughs> then that's the performance you get. So that's the direction we need. Data, caring spirit, we honor the sacred dignity of each person. We all have certain secrets, following sacreds and religious. Pray. We all do that. So I, I've been to places where people sit down, kneel down, stand up, and they pray. That's what I'm talking about. We all need that. We will stay together if you follow that procedures and that protocol. Data integrity. It's who I will. To me, this is so important. Integrity is we do the right thing with openness and pride. Along with that goes honesty. Stewardship. We are accountable for the resources we are entrusted with. That's later the same thing. Executive, same thing. Tribal employees, same thing. Then we have also humor. Humor is good to a certain extent. We try to create joyful and welcoming environment. Always come to the world. We greet each other openly. And that concludes my five minutes. So with that, any questions? Okay, the floor is now open for questions <coughs> from the legislative body. You do that 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, I wish every one of you well. It's a new beginning. And like I said, you know, positive starts with this. Not out there, not behind us, it starts right now. Uh, floor is this kind of story. Oh. I guess, um, I'm just speaking for myself. I kind of lost you. I don't know what, what were you. I mean, what were we talking about? Because I didn't get no expectations, no plan, no purpose, no, um, what were, where were we getting at with all of that? Because, um, right now, I think we're in a situation where a lot of our guys are in gals are at 32 hours a week. They're, um, how many aren't expected to come back and meet whole and who's all on it? You know, there's a lot of those things that'd be great to be listening to. Um, as far as, um, you know, I appreciate, you know, the respect and about prayer and all that, and that's great, but right now I think we're kind of looking at a report towards, um, you know, some of the expectations and deficiencies and pros and cons pertaining to the, the human resources side of, of where we're at. Um, I just, I kind of thought maybe I'd ask, because, you know, I think this is a quarterly report and I don't have nothing and I was looking for something to, what were you reading off of? Because I don't have nothing here. Um, and I don't have any projections. Um, how many people are employed at this time? I mean, not, you know, all that, and what, all those kinds of good things that we'd like to know and um, age groups, who's all, who's all employed, elders, stuff like that and you know, all those good um, things that are going on, who all, how many people got laid off, how many people are 32 hours unemployed, I mean, 
if if that be if if that be too much to ask, you know, maybe we can have something like that. I mean, we had all the way from January to April to get something ready. So. Yes, I need to apologize for that, but because of the 32 hour, I thought this will allude to some of the things because it addresses all of them. And I, you know, today I was going to print it out, bring it, didn't because my report was included with part of it, but it's a. I apologize for that, but it, uh, I did have some numbers here, but let me get to that. If I said five minutes, I stop. I was already alluded to that. I'm sorry if I can read that message. But uh, of all of the deficiencies that we have in the address right here, I'll okay, get some of you, you know, I'll pick this to all of you once our printer is up and we do uh, pin everything out because I understand that. We did put together the numbers, you know, for AML, roads, and such. Be um, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but when we have our district meetings, I like to come prepared because people ask us, it's kind of bad for me if I say I don't know because I kind of should know from these reports because I'm not in those trenches, I'm not in those departments, I'm not in the business of micromanaging, so it would be good to hear what's going on. Then that way, on our level as elected officials, if there's anything we can do, to argue on the federal level, then we can do that. That's kind of where we're coming from. So don't, no, not, we're not digging on nobody. We're just, we want um, good reports to convey to the, the other 13,664 um, crows out there. Yes, uh, I concur with Conrad there. We were kind of expecting more of a statistical information and what you're doing in your office, what's happening, what's happened past three months. That kind of a report is what we were expecting. I guess uh, maybe that wasn't relayed to you, or I don't, I don't know what the situation was. But anyway, uh, we will provide you with our uh, myself and Jackie and Junior here our, our email addresses. The next time, maybe you can forward an email to us, and we can forward it to everybody else, and then bring a hard copy when you do your report. And that would really make a difference, uh, and that would be the same for all the other cabinet heads. Uh, we all have cell phones. I'm sure everybody else does that has the, the email capacity. If not, you can use on your desk, desktop and uh, we can email one another and uh, coordinate. And I think that would be a, a great idea. Uh, any more questions for Mr. Deputy here? If not, um, I hope I'm going to uh, just wait, Mr. Enemy Hunter. I'm going to give the floor to uh, the Vice Chairman here. So that way he can give his report real quick and then we'll continue with your uh, cabinet heads. Can I go? Can Actually, four lots, and we came to a handshake agreement to purchase these. 
And um, there's a yellow piece right east of that that belongs to an individual. He, he actually wants, wants to sell, so I'm thinking if we could get that at a, at a good price, we're going to go ahead and um, pick that up too. And that's kind of where, where we're at uh, on the C store. Um, I've been working on some presentations. See, sometimes we get some of these companies from, or not companies, but individuals from these other tribes that uh, may want to go up to the mine and take a tour of the coal mine or know a little bit about our geology, hydrology, and stuff like that, some of our natural resources. <coughs> and in regards to the crow chart, there's not really a whole lot that's out there. Um, I've been kind of relying on Dave Lopez. He's a pretty high caliber geologist that has a lot of this information, kind of trade stuff together. Just working on some presentations in, in the event that, say, a uh, tester or Danes comes out and they want to go out to a coal mine and they might not be able to, to go out there, you know, have something put together so they understand a little bit about it. Or give them kind of a, a presentation before they go out there so that way if they have any specific questions related to whatever coal mine they're at, they could ask them at, the, at that time. Uh, summer youth, you know, uh, school is going to be out here pretty quick. And, um, you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna hire some youth for the summer, and that's always uh, something that these kids are really really looking forward to all the time. And this year, amongst the three other officials, we, we put our heads together and we thought that it would be good to have a uh, criteria for uh, summer employment. You know, good grades, attendance, um, you know, things of that nature. And uh, we're kind of reaching out to some of the schools, Las Grass, Harden, and you know, have uh, some of these administrators have some input that they have. We're uh, going to listen to that. Uh, some of the agreements that we have with, uh, in, in regards to placement, see, sometimes uh, you get a bunch of kids, and, and a lot of them don't have anywhere to go. They hang around the park, or they hang around the gas cap pill, or they it's kind of here and there. So. Um, this year we're going to try, we're kind of looking at, at places to, to put these kids to where they're not just, you know, not doing anything, standing around. So we uh, reached up to, or I think they came to us, the National Park Service of uh, C.C. Reed was um, kind of the person, the contact person there. They agreed, I think they're going to be able to house a uh, place like eight people. National Park Service, there's uh, here at Crow Agency and also at Fort Smith. And um, also the FSA and the NRCS office in Harden, they're kind of a small office. I've been doing some uh, business with them, doing some meetings and stuff, and they said that they could uh, put two on. So we're, you know, kind of constantly looking for some of these agencies to where we could place these kids. These kids could learn something, learn a little bit about land, learn a little bit about the dam, hydrology, sciences, whatever it is that uh, these kids may take an interest in and may want to go to college or may want to go to a trade school or something to kind of make, do something for themselves. Um, that's it. Any questions? The floor is open for questions. Any comments? Okay, Mr. Bird. Mr. Bird. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, uh, uh, members of the body. Some now should be like uh, for some reason. I don't know, we're going to wait on that real soon and we're going to come up with the number. Okay. Mr. Brandon. Mr. Speaker, okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there's an area here that we talked about previous. Uh, we haven't heard back from them. That area there? No, uh, we didn't hear back from the only people that we heard back from that uh, actually showed any kind of interest in working with us were these two, these two individuals that were uh, that we have on there. Um, we have a set amount of money and uh, we're trying to act on it before uh, Tim falls down and uh, Kurt and Forge lose it up to so trying to act on it. So we have a little bit of a, some of that money that's allocated to us for this project. Um, so is there still a possibility to try to meet with the person that is in the area? Is there still a possibility to try to get a hold of them still? Yeah, I mean, there's only so much, you know, you could go and send letters and, and attempt to make phone calls, leave messages. If they don't turn it back, that kind of give, you know, kind of gives me the idea that they're not really interested in working with us. We're still open for questions, comments. 
Lieutenant Torrey and Ms. Connor Stewart. I just wanted to ask one question since it's not, I guess, not, not necessarily pertaining to income, but we did have a, a, a line item for a sign in the budget. I made a request a while back, 23,000 was set aside for that Jesus Lord on the preservation sign. And when I put in a request for that to, to Carla, we were told there's no money. But we had already appropriated that. So um, maybe with your help, I'll make that email with your CC on there. We can go ahead and ask for that again. Because we passed that as a law for the 20, fiscal year 2014 budget for 23000 There's res resolution backing that up. And so right now, there's a spot for it. We've got a, we've got the uh, estimates. Everything's in place. We just need to, you know, step it up and say what we said we we're going to do. Because the money needs to be in there. That's that's one of the boards. Go ahead. Okay, I agree with you, uh, Stuart. That uh, if you just send, send send me an email or you know send it on, I'll I'll. Uh, I'll have to keep for this and do my best. So they're still put. Okay, now we'll move on to with uh, Mr. Enemy Hunter and the Chapman Hits. Before we move to the next presenter, let me uh, answer what CJ was asking about. You know, I have a cabinet meeting every week. And I get weekly reports, I get monthly reports, I get quarterly reports from all the candidates, and they're pretty, uh, they're good reports, they're precise. So, you know, at any time, as a matter of transparency, if you needed that information, you can come to my office, we'll dig into my cabinet, we can find just about any week, any month you want, for your use, you know, just to let you know. You know, if you have a little difficulty getting that from the candidates, then you can definitely get it from me, because I do have those. And again, it's getting back to the term transparency. At any time, anybody can come in and dig you know, through the files the cabinet I have, and you'll find everything that all the cabinets are doing weekly, quarterly, and monthly. I appreciate that. Oh. Yeah, I'm not say it's always available. Next, we'll hear from uh, Tarot Director Louis Goodluck. Well, right, guys, it's Louis Goodluck. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Senators, Speaker of the House, and the Tribal and the, 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 the Cabinet Head members. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize we were supposed to do a report as of today. And, uh, yesterday was my day off, and I go check my email this morning, and they said we had to get our reports ready, so we had to do some rushing around. But anyway, I kind of drafted up some stuff that we did. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read it to you. Uh, <clears throat> generally, we had a Montana sheet metal worker, local union coordinator, come by. His name was Dale Carpenter, and the Ontario office for a visit, wanting to require tribal members equipped that are interested in the training program with the sheet metal program. <clears throat> the Ontario staff had a this is for the month of January. The Ontario staff had a training. The resume applications writing with this morning is the great couple of the uh, human resource department. It was a one day uh, presentation. The reason why they wanted to do this was because most of the applications that were <coughs> being doing the resumes to uh, Westmoreland wasn't what they wanted, how their writing was supposed to be. So he gave us a little presentation and how to do that. And uh, February we had a meeting with the Crow's Tribe Secretary of Not Afraid regarding the CBA, uh, CDL training that the Crow Tribe delivered from college, the Crow Education Department, and the Rose Department. Those in attendance were AJ Not Afraid, New York, and Crow here at Stuart Barney coming to Rose School with the Porch. And then we had a pre bid meeting in Billings with Montana Department Treasury regarding the pre bid last as the announced for the Pentagon and Furniture. Uh, in March, we got a pre bid for all ways signs that we'll be doing in the summer of 2014. And we had a meeting with Paul Little regarding the Veteran Cemetery project, which is supposed to start construction in midsummer. And then on the 17th of March, the CDL program, the Olympic Orange College started. 
And the list that I gave you in the back here is are the ones that did apply. And we have about 12 individuals that are in that program. Um, this is one from one of my compliance officers. Uh, it says that from the time that I started with the Tero, I have gone through the employee files and contractor files during the same time. Captain Carpenter and myself have computed all the employee files in the Excel <coughs> data tracking system, a total of 540 applications. I have also been inputting in applications uh, to turn in. Attached the status of the applicant files, we have a total of 135 active contractor files, 130 of active files. I have also been updated and collected contract files. All the files have been updated and imputed in the finance <coughs> tracking system. For general sake, I have gone out to do compliance check with efficient construction here in Crow Agency with the BI orders. General Director had received complaint that efficient construction was hiring two new employees. We were told that they have had some employee, had the same employees. We told them that there should be any changes to notify the terror department right away. On January 8th, uh, gone out to do a compliance check with uh, <coughs> Ankle Bridge Construction and Gravel Construction on Two Leggings Road, about a mile or two Phoenix Road. We had approached the company and asked the status of the land. We had said that the gravel pit was on the land. We had explained to them that the terror regulation state any company working within the boundaries of the crew reservation <coughs> that we're supposed to hire tribal members. The project manager state that there are two workers and that the project was just finishing up and that they are in the process of reclaiming. And then um, I'm back in January, they send us some new hires from Westmoreland. I uh, really didn't have time so far. The total amount that the terror brought in from January to March was $42,825. So, thanks for your report. Do you have any questions? Uh, floor is now open for questions. I'd like to make an announcement too. Uh, we are on webcam, so for your information, being telecasted. Throughout the internet world, uh, some from Washington D.C. watch us. Some one of my cousins watches us from over there, and from all over the uh, country here. Anyway, just for your information, who recognizes Conrad Stewart? It might seem like I'm asking a lot of questions, but I keep my head here to the ground on a lot of these issues. I'm an advocate for tribal members to get these seats and a lot of times you know this you know just like I stated earlier the Constitution says quarterly reports quarterly January April July October everybody knows this and you know, having one day off doesn't cover that. And I think, you know, we're not we're doing our tribal membership an injustice when we when we go out there and we quote that we have sixty percent unemployment and yet we're not fighting for these jobs out there that the white man's taking from us. But right next to the metropolitan area of Bellings and Sheridan, we have all these folks coming in and out of our reservation. We have a dam here, we have all the vendors coming in, we have all the folks going to Sarpy Creek, we have all the folks coming into Cloud Peak, and not one time are we even fighting for any of these positions. I've asked the questions earlier, where is the layoff list from the Sarpy Creek coal mine? It's not there. Why can't we just send an email? And we need to make coverage of this. Where's the issue concerning the, the tarot conference? that was held in Vegas, where's all of that? Who all went? How much was spent? You know, all these issues like that. Did we get anything out of it? You know, did our director go? I mean, I don't know. We need to know these things. And there's a lot of issues. Philip 66 is doing a remediation over there in the Soap Creek area because of the spill. How's that going? Um, maybe, I don't know. I know people are working out there. I don't know who's all working there, if there's any tribal members. We need to be advocates, guys. 
We need to be advocates. There's a lot of people out there right now that don't have a job. And right now, we're, they're struggling. People, are, are, uh, people need these jobs, and we can't just, just give it to the, you know, the, the next guy on, in line from, from the white side. I continue to say this, and some people think I might be, might be full of it, but when we put our hand on that Bible and we swore to uphold for this 2.4 million acres, we swore that between these exterior boundaries, we were going to protect our co people. Now, when these white people come into the state of Montana, they have to abide by the state of Montana rules. When they come into the, when the Crow Reservation, they have to abide by the Crow Terrell rules. Let's take ourselves seriously. We have laws and rules. Let's put our people to work. I'm tired of it. Since 1974, our Crow people's been at the end of the shovel, they still are to the state. Where's our training? Let's put in for this. That's easy. A couple pages, that doesn't cut it. Man, with all the money we put into all of this, and this is all we get, it's an injustice to the general counsel. Sorry, but I have to say it. Well, let me tell you that Philip 66, <clears throat> that's a right away. We found out with the attorney that we gave that right away. And it covers that $1 billion and something else that he sent us to the tribe that covers everything. And it states in there that the Terrell Department will not have any jurisdiction regarding contractors and subcontractors. When they came over to, with a $100,000 check and then some, and then you turned it away, why weren't we told about that? What do you mean 100000 All their vendors came in to pay for their fees. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You gotta read that lease agreement. That's, lease agreement that's a sign from the fact. Doesn't matter. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to try it. Water right here. Point of order. Point of order. We need to fight for jobs. We do. Okay, point of order right now. Okay, the floor recognizes Carlson goes there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I know that we only have like one and previously I was a uh, work for Carroll and I was a compliance officer on the western part of the res uh, training Winston, because we were here, Bapurus, respective districts, Ball, a big bush, a dirag, a dirag bush, be you can. A big compliance today, Bob and Comayoam, compliance officer. A whole way, I would get Ashwa, so big, I hit that way. Mana, Mana, my head, Kakaway, the house, the left, the big way will cheer much, Makabeh, director, the budget, director, the other, the chippers, you. It's Patrick, it's put out cheek, and who can be wise to it or you wag him, can go make no answer. He's a good answer, is there? Who said, uh, could not panel out, so the gate, call her ahead. Who calls Bowsawa, we kill her ahead. You, he took Kaiwa Hissawa, and now there's a new guy, he's out, Eric, and I get a dear Bapur, seventy five miles away, get it, and I get you queer. My book is the law of our daily children. Hey, you guys, I got tired of you. Hey, me, you guys, you, I look out of that, you get to me, my book is that. Couldn't have get training, get it. You got a community center, get it, they can inform. Much of it, they have occasions, get it, cook that. Do time, I. The car, go to watch, get us out of. Go to watch, get us out. You know, information knowledge that those are sell what they, or what they die again, I get it, but it, but, uh, but they want to hear that, you know, about you, but you can look up, what you want to hear, and you can, uh, go, uh, community center, get it, uh, yeah, I get it, I keep 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 it, and anyways, you, I would think those are sell, uh, job for Sadiq, uh, who get to give transit to that? Hey, that's a studio. Elvin, 
Fransa kade chita kusa ga de kergom pakte da wa po gosta go de fot de awa de ana go ta yo go mono poshpio ra ri kergon amona poshpio ra ra da ri kergon na ri do sosta go shit bat ta ji ya ge ye wala ko jem ba jumi he mi akhi jewe at least 14 hours could he ya ga ga je hi dio di he ga de Hey, can I stand up? The Lord can save me now. You know, about 10-15 minutes. Where the good time they give? Hey, the view of God. Our good deed. I'm a bush. You're going to see what the Kagoni says is about. That the two hours that day. Yeah, can I save you? Hey, day that he then, my poor good Kagon, those are some good days. They up here again. Yeah, my good deed. I'm a good time they give. That's I'm a good time. You want to hear? My poor is a good hour. Yeah, I got. He mai wa he so was saying. He diuk, he na au ala ba te gele go ni wos ni chua. He ta wa wish kya jobs kere is kyun, but bai me ta wu lo ki chin wa as giuk. He miuk ko se wa ar kyo ko ho. Oh, floor is still open. Oh, wait. Okay, floor is back to Luke here. Let me say that, you know, we all have the concern that CJ has and Duki has. But we know that job creation is the key. Jobs have not been created in the past. We're starting to create some, it takes time. And it also takes money, a lot of money to create jobs. And as I've stated before, the cabinet heads on their own are struggling to create jobs. It's not like we're sitting there and waiting for money to hand it over because it's not going to be handed over. We do have to create it, and so I just wanted to state that. And you hear from each candidate who are struggling because it, they don't have the money to create jobs. That's my struggle. You know, I've gone to the whole chunk, looked at some different tribes, and I used to work with all the tribes in the United States, and there's a lot of good ideas, a lot of avenues we can take, a lot of revenue streams we can be involved with. That's the key we're talking about. You know, we can't keep saying the past, but you know, we've, we've taken leaps and bounds. We met with some construction companies as, as I kind of took over Terra supervision, and some of those construction crews have never even seen the Terra ordinance. First time they've seen it, first time they've worked with it. So I just want to state some of that. And so next we'll hear from Water Resources, if Clay Gregory is not here, then whoever his representative is. Floor recognized Jay Holtz. Um, good afternoon. I am an IT person at um, Water Resource. Um, Titus Tixgren is at um, a PMC meeting right now, and Clay Gregory is on staff or staff <coughs> So I have the reports here. I don't know if any of you know that we have a website. It's called um, ctwrd.com, and all these reports are on here, our permanent reports are all on there. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and read from you the M MRNI report. Yeah. Um, the items that he had is going to need to read are in blue, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, under the master plan document, they have conducted two uh, meetings to address comments, and we'll be working further this week on those on the master plan. And then the environmental assessment, they're compiling a list of questions and concerns that need to be addressed before public scoping begins, addressing those questions and holding on scoping meetings. And the critical questions that need to be answered were um, water rates, how much water is needed, how much wastewater, how is it going to be treated, how is the water quantity of the WTP waste stream, treatment of plant location, what is the footprint for the WTP, what is the footprint for the pounds for the WTP, type of intake, sizes and locations for tanks and boosters. We had um, environmental assessment meetings at um, different districts 
and these were the questions that um, people asked. So that was that list. And then under the water sampling, um, the current status is uh, working to hire a person to sample. Next step, begin sampling as soon as possible. The critical question needed answered use existing operators working for the tribe or construct or construction crew until operator sampler can be hired. Uh, the geotechnical investigation, waiting for cultural clearance. And NEPA needs to have uh, to clear, clear drill sites. And the pilot plan study, complete geotechnical investigation, again water sampling. Um, that's it for the, um, the MRMI. And then I've got the Crow Irrigation Project, that's the CIP. And the current status of the master plan is the CTWRD submitted the draft CIP master plan for review to Reclamation and the BIA on 3.6.14. An updated draft CIP master plan was submitted for review to Reclamation and the BIA on 3.11. 14, which incorporated the information regarding the past ONM activities received from the BIA 22514 reclamation will first be completed the review and then we'll send the reviewed documents to the BIA for review. This should serve to provide one review document with all comments incorporated and should make the addressing of comments simpler. And the next milestone is complete review of the draft CIP master plan, reclamation and the BIA. And then the environmental assessment. All comments have been received and are being incorporated into the draft CIP EA. Work is proceeding on preparation of the draft CIP EA. Submission of the official draft <coughs> CIP EA to reclamation for review is scheduled the week of 4, 2014. And the next step to that is complete preparation of the draft CIP EA and submit to reclamation for review. And on um, the big core and high check, uh, construction is scheduled to commence 4-7-2014. Um, the construction crew came back last week and they did, um, we had uh, meetings with them. We did some training and um, updated everybody, so we started already. And then under Big Horn High Check, uh, the NEPA is complete, verified with PTWRD, potential pitfalls, weather contingent, cultural monitors will be needed to put in place for earth moving activities. And then on the Big Horn High Check, uh, the one before that was Big Horn High Check on Improvement. And then the Big Horn High Check wall. The current status is um, final design comments were received from recognition pre 12 14. The next step is the IE to complete the review of the final design. Address final comments from recognition and the IE and the instant construction. The next milestone is to receive comments from the BIA and the final design to issue notice to proceed and commence construction of the BIA and TWRD. Um, the Willow Creek. Comments were received from the BIA on 326.14. Work is proceeding on the 35% design. And the next step to that one is um, complete and submit the 95% design to reclamation and BIA for review. The next milestone is complete 95% of that. And the Willow Creek uh, Peter Canal Phase 2, um, the only change on that is uh, the Peter Canal was reopened on 3514. And then on the Phase 3, same one, Willow Creek Peter, Peter Canal. Current status is 35% design is submitted to reclamation and a BIA for review. The next step is um, Reclamation and the BI to complete their review of the 35% design. And next milestone, complete review, design, Reclamation and the BI. 
and prior waste weight. The current status on that, the 95% design was submitted uh, to reclamation and the BIA for review on 325.14. The next step is reclamation and the BIA to complete their review of the 95% design. And the next milestone, complete review, reclamation and BIA. And the row, it says, although it was previously discussed that the project could utilize the road ditch for the project and that no additional work is needed, the BIA is requiring that the row consent application be signed by the allottees and that formal approval for construction of the project within the BIA's road row be granted to the BIA superintendent prior to the commitment of any work in BIA's road row. And then it says um, notice issued to proceed on material procurement for the project. Thank you, Jane. Um, can we have a copy of that? Um, I'm making copies. Okay. I'll give it to you before five. Okay. Okay. Sure, that'd be great. Well, our, All right. Our staff can make copies. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. And um, maybe some questions in the comments or whatever off in the body here. Floor is open for questions, comments. Floor <coughs> is back. Thank you, Speaker, members of the body, <coughs> guests. Now I just had some uh, staffing questions. What's what's your workforce right now? What's it projected to be for this uh, um, actual construction year? Yeah, CJ has been working with the uh, water code. He's been very uh, working, hitting hard at it. But for um, guys, CJ is probably going to elaborate on that. Oh, I um, appreciate your report, and um, I look forward to your copy of it. I know the water. Okay, I said it's on the internet, and anybody can look at this whole report and maps everything. It's great. That's awesome. Um, I know the water department has been going through some serious ups and downs because cause, because of some of the issues that Bureau of Rec has been putting us through. And you know, I know the biggest um, issue was trying to get some of our people back to work and then get on. Um, you get to utilize a lot of the water settlement monies that are that are there and available. And um, I know our community. Our committee is standing behind you guys all the way because, um, like I said, I'm, I'm not an advocate for micromanagement. And I believe that Grove Rick is micromanaging. And now that we're at a point where the chairman has negotiated, you know, uh, money is coming in and, and then we don't have to reimburse the general fund and so forth, that puts us in a position to where we can do more things with our departments. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. And so, um, when the weather is right, I did want to um, make a request for a tour to some of these sites and possibly the, the committee. And I think we do have um, the majority of the branch, probably about 15 of us are on the committee. Yeah, actually our, like, it's usually winter is when our season starts because the irrigation ditches are open, so, you know, it's kind of hard for them to, they do what they can in the summer. Yeah, um, well, even at that, it'd be nice to we'll go out there and take a look at some of the projected um, sites and some of the sites that are completed. I just want to make that a request. Thank you. Yep, that's on the website, too. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. Any <laughs> questions, comments? What's the website again? Uh, ctwrd.com. Uh, I've seen the sites, uh, but I. I mean, it'd be good for us to yeah, go out there. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, Jane. Yeah. Floor, uh, floor back to Luke. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'm Luke Probably our greatest potential in development, the growth of the Crow Tribe, is with our natural resources. 
So, you know, to hear on some of that, we have for you, Kelvin Sokosovo-Torera, Cabinet Director, Cabinet Head for National Research. Hello, this is Kelvin Herrera. Hello, my name is uh, Kelvin Herrera, otherwise known as Lucas A. Wood. I'm the Cabinet Head for Natural Resources. Start out with the uh, Cobell. The tribe is going to uh, participate in the outreach phase of the program as soon as a cooperative agreement is negotiated. In this process, we'll con contact the landowners and make sure they have a clear understanding of the settlement and their options. There are 1,023 foreign Indians who own either the service or the mineral or both on the pro res. There are 3,153 crows that own the service or the minerals on both. Owners live in 43 states, three foreign countries. Don't quote me on this, but this is an estimate. There is $103 million to buy that on a coal. It's not an exact, but it's an estimate. $103 million for the Cobell. Going into land management, we gathered horses and we had an auction. I think we sold 35 head for the protection and safety of the Crow tribe members. Uh, we have at, we we start advertising the mountain range units. At a minimum bid of forty-five dollars for every AUM, forty dollars for every AUM. We did some research. Some of the tribes charge fifty. Some of them charge sixty. So, but we went forty this year, from forty-five to forty dollars. We we got some bids in. They did not meet the minimum bid, and we're sending letters out saying they didn't meet it. We're going to stay. We're going to stay at forty. Let me put it that way. Forty dollars is the minimum, and we're not going to budge. We we started uh, the leasing of the agricultural and other lands. We updated the delinquency list. That is those individuals that don't pay and keep leasing land year after year after year, but they don't pay. We upgraded that, and if you're on the delinquent list, you will not get a lease. We, uh, some tribes have already started the the uh, the buyback program, but we at the Crow here don't have a an agreement yet with the bureau. Okay, I'll move to the CCRO Crow Rex on the Crow Crow regulation. We're working on a the primacy. Partial primacy, not full primacy, but partial. I'll be in task for Thursday. Meet with OSM on their budget and the steps that the tribe has to take to, to be uh, certified primacy, partial primacy, and their budget. We have to put forth uh, IDP, I requested this six months ago, 
<coughs> in the original development plan and the staff at CCRO has put forth a, a IDP and put a time, time frame on it. Buffalo Bison. We have started to develop a bison management plan, which I hope to have in committee here for August vote. But I'm still waiting on some different indicates for their input. We, the natural resource, need a bison management plan. We, the bison, the bison management department went to two expos, one in Billings and one in Salt Lake. The, the purpose of the visit was to let the people know that we have bison on Crow Ridge. We here on Crow Ridge might not know it, but we run our buffalo as wildlife. They're free up there. They run around like, like elk, deer, and deer. And there's no other place, no other tribe that's like that. We met with some state veterinarians Saturday and some private veterinarians. And there's 150 buffalo on the Turner Ranch and I've been quarantined for five years. I don't want to give it to us. But we have to, we have to put forth a proposal and a plan an operational plan to get these. And we can do it. Oh, another thing. <clears throat> we were going to start last fall, but snow got to us. We want to, to go out to all the districts. Say, give us your best shooters. Two or three shooters. Up there, we're going to give you from six to ten head of buffalo for each district. You shoot them, you cut them, you quarter them, you take them home. But we're going to start that program. Plus, we had a meeting and it was discussed that we, in a bison department, buffalo pasture department, uh, go get. 10, 15 head, have them process and distribute them to the elderly. So you all get some. Distribute them to the elderly, diabetic, <coughs> in schools, churches, etc., etc. Okay, EPA. EPA is working on a, a new water code for the tribe. And uh, noxious weeds, weeds, they're working on a lot of plans. So we have a good EPA staff, very knowledgeable, and they're working on, especially the water code, the, the Clean Water Act. Trying to get it to committee. Fishing game. I like to call them the conservation department. Fishing game department is not cops. You don't want to be cops. We are 
Fish and Game Conservation Department. And the National Native American National Native American Fish and 